Hello and welcome to the Somatic Movement and Mindset podcast with me, clinical somatic educator and founder of Total Somatics, Heidi Hadley. The Somatic Movement and Mindset podcast has been designed to help you gain a deeper understanding to how your mind and body work. You will learn about your amazing mind and body and why over time you can feel pain, recurring injuries and poor posture. Within this podcast, I will teach you why this doesn't have to be your future or the norm for you. Would you like to learn how to reduce pain, move freely and gain a new lease of life? Let's get started. Hello and welcome back. Now, I just want to say a heartfelt welcome to all the new friends that have joined the Total Somatics online membership. It's so wonderful to have you in that beautiful community of like-minded individuals around the world. So I'm really looking forward to working much closer with you, focusing on what you need. So let's stay connected because that's fantastic. And then you will already see the benefits within the Total Somatics membership, how wherever you are, there's content and material to support you there. Okay, so just before we get started in today's episode, again, if you're watching this on the Total Somatics YouTube channel, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and press the notification bell. So that really allows you to stay up to date with this material. But also, this is how YouTube works in particular for the YouTube channel, is that the more people that like this material and subscribe and press the notification bell and share and all that sort of thing, it allows other people to hear this information, which is really important because this is really about serving and supporting the community as a whole and we can all do our bit to support each other so it's just that really nice community feel that we can have and again if you are finding these episodes beneficial please share them to those ones that you know this will resonate with okay so today i'd like to ask you a question and we're going to be looking at our emotional mental health today and how that all patterns and creates impact on our body So the question I'd like to ask you is, would you say that the person you are emotionally and mentally today is a different person from maybe two years ago, five, 10, 20, maybe 35 years ago? Would you consider that you've over the time maybe questioned the beliefs and the narratives that you may have been given when you were at school or the culture that you were raised in or maybe parents or other people like teachers when they would tell you things have you over the time started to basically question those narratives because many times the beliefs and the narratives that we were given years ago they can really impact us in our adulthood And I'm sure you can probably connect with this many more years that you've been walking on this beautiful planet. You'll know that, that our emotional and mental well-being that we have today has a huge influence from our childhood and what we were told and our belief systems and our narratives. And so what I want us to consider here is how much have you become curious or explored the world around you um, personally, rather than allowing other people to form your opinions because as well as in, as well as intentioned, many people may have been over the years, the narratives or the beliefs that you were told by them were actually molded by their life experiences, maybe from their parents, maybe from their upbringing. And in many cases, some of those people would have experienced times of like war and other traumatic, oppressive times where there was real hardship. And that would have molded and sculpted and shaped a person's nervous system and also their belief systems and their internal narratives. And so what your experience here is somebody else's perception or the way they view the world through their lens. And yet we are a blank canvas when we're a child. And really, we can start to, even at a later date, we can start to work on challenging those beliefs and those narratives. Because thankfully, we know now from science that there is an element of nature nurture. We know that. So we could just say, well, it's our genes. That's the way we are. You know, we can't change anything to do with our emotional and mental well-being. However, what we can also consider is that with science, we've learned about amazing things such as epigenetics. And epigenetics is quite a liberating area of science for us to consider when it comes to our belief systems and our narratives and how that sculpts and molds and shapes our entire health and well-being. Because what it teaches us with epigenetics is that our genes aren't fixed as they were. 
You see, people used to say that the way you were born and the, your genes, that's what you're given in life type of thing. Whereas what epigenetics has shown is that really our lifestyle choices, our emotional, mental well-being, all of these aspects, the choices we make in life can either switch on a gene that we may be predisposed to, maybe irritable bowel disorders, different inflammatory bowel disorders. Lifestyle shifts and changes can allow that gene not to switch on. This is what's incredible, is that genes have the capacities to switch on or switch off. And epigenetics, or the lifestyle choices that we make, the decisions we make, even with our internal narrative and our belief systems, can change the way that our body is. And that's really because if you think about it, sometimes when we've had a disempowering belief system or a narrative, or we think everything in the world is evil or awful, it can create a self-fulfilling prophecy. We just look through the lens that everybody has it in for us or, you know, there's got to be an ulterior motive why that person's nice to us. And it could just be because they're a really nice person. But sometimes we've allowed ourselves to get into that. It's even things such as social media and even these platforms. They can be a source of fantastic up building content but sometimes comments and things can be a bit of a cesspit of toxicity and negativity and it's a bit like going back to the old playground you can see all these people piling in when you have somebody that's quite bullish in their behavior quite um quite unkind or critical and then you see other personalities and the real characters of people coming out because they jump on the bandwagon as it were so what you start to see is people's beliefs their narratives their characters start to show up and for us, what that does is it allows us to stand back, view ourselves as well as other people that we interact with and realize it's more to do with what can we do personally to change things, to become more positive, kind, empowering, upbuilding, not only to other people, which is really important, but to ourselves. Because often when we hear ourselves or other people talking about other people, that's a huge reflection of their own self-worth. And that comes back to belief systems and narratives. So instead of us comparing or going into fault finding mode about other people, we want to use our time wisely and energy, it, like energetically and physiologically, we want to use our time wisely and, and really efficiently. And so that's why I share it with you, because over the years, I've worked with thousands of people because I've been working in clinical practice for over 20 years now. So not only do I work with people in person here in Australia and people travel from all around Australia to come and see me in the clinic. So I see people from all different states within Australia. But also when I had my private practice in the UK, I saw people there. And of course, I work with people globally within the Total Somatics membership. What you start to notice is when we work on the power of somebody's mindset and we start to use this, the properties and the principles and the practices of mindfulness, we can start to shift and change the state of your nervous system, how that patterns tension and tightness, what that does internally to the physiological actions and behaviors of your body. We can start to shift and change our health and well-being. And so... When we have like restrictions or rigidity in our mindset, we can see that reflection of our subconscious in our body. You see, our body shows everything up. So if we're very rigid and we're very restricted and very hard on ourselves, or maybe just hard on society and life, not just on ourselves, what we start to see is there's a rigidity in people's movements. They are solid and locked down in their shoulders and in their rib cage. Their muscles reflect how they are energetically and emotionally because they lock down and get rigid too. Their posture changes because if you're not feeling too confident, you're going to start to have a bit of a stooped posture. But if you do feel confident, but you are kind of given the illusion that you're confident because it's a lot of high functioning anxiety, you can almost have what some people will say is like, I've heard people say this and it's really interesting actually, because I see things on a different level, like I see people's subconscious reflected in their posture. But I'm listening to people all the time and you'll hear people say things like, oh, they walk so cocky, they're so full of themselves. And yet it's actually often 
and they might be quite confident but it's often when you look at other factors is they are giving that illusion and their brain stem stress response is putting them more into a big sway back their chest puffs out they have their belly might protrude a little bit their shoulders set back they almost walk like a sergeant major so what happens is again there's rigidity and tension within their rib cage their movement their breathing their posture because they're locked in a high functioning go 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 um, survival pattern of stress you know that's how their nervous system is holding them so again that energetically and their neuro endocrine system which is their hormones all the nervous system and the hormonal systems they are pumping out this stress response this cortisol this is the stuff that makes us feel highly inflammatory highly inflamed and we can't keep living like this but if we've had belief systems where it's self-absorbent to spot, stop and spend time on yourself or to maybe find ways to decompress and discharge maybe share with somebody in a confidential manner maybe like a psychologist to get support maybe that's been considered as something not you know some disempowering um, advice that's been given in the past again someone else's narrative and belief system it means we continue pushing all our emotions and our anxiety and stress down so we've allowed somebody else's opinions and their view on life to sculpt and mold and shape how we're influencing our life today and that's where i want us just to encourage us to stand back and actually feel liberated to know that you can actually just question a lot of these narratives that you have because we've often created these invisible barriers around us because of what we've been told we can and we can't do and so what I would just want to share again with you is what we tell ourselves repeatedly in our mind can become a self-fulfilling prophecy. And those internal narratives and dialogue dialogues do come from other people. And so they are just sharing their limiting beliefs, their fears, their anxieties, and just projecting it on another generation or, you know, somebody else within that, that dynamic. And sometimes you may notice that with your, um, your personal beliefs, when you start to challenge them, when you start to question them, it's actually quite, again, I keep using the word liberating, but it really is. Because I wanna share something with you, and that is that we always want to have the opportunity to explore and expand. And that's why my question at the beginning was, would you say you're the same person as you were two, five, 20, 30, 40 years ago? Hopefully the answer is no, because what we want to be doing is evolving and changing. And it's about personal growth and development. We want to be questioning all the time. How can we improve on how we were last year? How can we grow as a person? How can we give to people more? How can we take more care of ourselves? Um, all these sorts of things. And so the reason I say this is that when my husband and I, um, many years ago, wanted to emigrate to Australia, you know, we planned it for about five years. We'd come back and forth, weighed up where we wanted to live, fell in love with Adelaide, it's a beautiful place, come and visit. Um, but we fell in love with beautiful Adelaide. It ticked all the boxes for us. So we did all the research, we did everything. And when we went back to England and we were packing up, and it's if you've ever emigrated, it's incredibly overwhelming, lots of emotions, but we were ready to do it. But I remember my dad saying to me once, at this right at the end, he said, just give it a go. He said, what's really sad in life is when people get to the end of their life and they say, if only. He goes, if it doesn't work out in Australia, you just come back, you can stay in our spare bedroom, get yourself back on your feet and get going from there. He said, because if it doesn't work out, you've started with a new firm foundation of knowledge on where you wanna go from here. And that was the difference. It's just stepping slightly outside of a comfort zone of maybe staying where we were because it's easy. But sometimes when we step forward and we step over that line, that maybe that figurative line or climb over that barrier, we realize how actually there's so many more opportunities. There's so much more in life that we can explore. So that could be moving to the other side of the world, but it could also be challenging a narrative that you've been told. And it could be, don't do this because your back's really fragile. You've got a crumbling spine. I've heard that so many times. Your back is weak. Um, you don't, don't do this particular movement anymore. I, I hear these all the time. It's really very disempowering. And of course, those narratives, that, that's not come from like early 
childhood, that's come from recent times from maybe health practitioners, well-intentioned, but it's not actually landed very well in their nervous system and it's created a lot of fear and anxiety. So can you see that these narratives and belief systems could be childhood, but they can come later on in life, which is why we want to constantly recalibrate and see how we feel emotionally, mentally, physically and energetically. How can we improve with our emotional and mental well-being today compared to maybe last week, last month, last year? Because when we restrict ourselves in these barriers, um, as I said, it's very, uh, it limits a lot of potential that we can experience in life. And if you haven't checked this out, please, after this episode, go onto YouTube and just Google in something like spiders and circle. If you haven't seen it, it's absolutely fascinating. So in YouTube, there's this picture of just a piece of paper and they've put a spider on the piece of paper. And this person's got a pen and he's just drawn a circle around the pen, around the ant, should I say. So it's this circle around this little spider on the paper. Now that little spider walks to the edge where the circle is. And then all of a sudden doesn't think he can go anywhere else. So then he walks elsewhere and he stays confined in this circle. So then the person that's filming this makes the circle a bit smaller. And as he makes it smaller, that spider just moves amongst that smaller circle, it just stays there. And that's the conditioning that's come about. That spider doesn't realize that if it just steps over that line, it's actually a barrier that he's created in his own little mind. And actually he does have that freedom to explore and be curious and try other things. And yet there's this other really cute um, YouTube video and this time they've got an ant and they've drawn a circle for the ant, but he's used like a little texter pen. So as he circles it, he must have just accidentally missed contact on the paper. So there's this circle, but there's a little gap at the top. And the ant's really cool because it walks around and it can't get over the line in its head, but then walks up the other end of the circle and sees a gap and literally walks through that little gap like it's a gate. So can you see that just looking at that really simple example, we can still be doing the same for ourselves. We can allow other people's belief systems and their fears and their perception of their life and their world. They throw that on us over the years and that can create these figurative barriers or circles around us. And it's only if we step over that line, like the little spider or little ant could do, step over and we realize that we've created those boundaries. And yet, actually, if we experiment and we explore and we're curious, we can actually discover more. And that's why I encourage you on this side of things, because when we're using pandiculation and somatic movement, you can have fear in your head thinking, I can't do this. I can't move this way. But that's why I'm always saying in somatic movement and in pandiculation, be curious. You're just exploring and experimenting and noticing how you are feeling today and how can you move today? you're always in control of the range of movement and the speed you can and with all my cues of additional things for movement within the membership you'll also see how you are actually just walk literally like stepping over that line that little boundary that barrier and it's just allowing you to have a bit more confidence and go actually i can do this that person that told me not to move that way anymore if I'm doing this in an intelligent manner with a mind and body movement sequence, which is actually changing the muscle memory and the movement um, coordination in your body, I can actually do this. And when you're taught breathing strategies associated with that movement, it just empowers you even more. So again, become curious, start to explore, move away from the conditioning that we've had in wherever that is in our life. Because can you see now the overlap between your emotion, your mental well-being, how that shapes your posture, the rigidity that we can have. And those limitations can then stop us from exploring, being curious and experimenting with our practice and our movement. And so when we are conditioned, we kind of live in this limbic system, this fear stress response. We no longer question anything because if you are in a fear response, the last thing you're going to do is sit there, sat back on your sofa and, and contemplate life and ask questions. In a stress response, you're like, how are we getting out of here? This is survival. How do I get out of here? Whereas when we actually start to ask questions and we become curious, we quieten down the limbic system, the stress center, and we activate the front part of our brain. That's focus, awareness, concentration, decision-making, emotional intelligence. 
This is really important because when we change to that part of our neurobiology, that's when we start to actually make huge shifts and changes and we create confidence in what we do. And so as we move forward today, what I'd encourage you to do is every time you hear the expression, I can't, or there's other disempowering thoughts, feelings, emotions, sensations that you have, could I encourage you just to stop and just notice that that's all they are, is a feeling or an emotion. And we can change these things quite quickly. Because remember, if your nervous system is experiencing a negativity or a disempowering belief system, those sensations will imprint on your body. And so what we need to do is become incredibly selective about what we watch, what we read, what we listen to, who we associate with, what we consume when it comes to say food and drink because all of these things can really take us off kilter they can affect the equilibrium equilibrium in our body either emotionally mentally physically energetically we know things such as sugar increases inflammation that starts to again uh, create more stress on your body and on your nervous system so as we close today i'd like you to consider this that if you feel overwhelmed or you have times where you think you've got everything in order and then other times you just feel overwhelmed, a bit anxious, a bit stressed, that's natural because our nervous system is fluctuating all the time. So I would love to um, share with you a free resource. It's a 10 minute audio. And what this will do is you can use it any time of the day, but it helps to change the state of your nervous system. What it's going to do is help to regulate your nervous system and bring you back into that rest and digest. When we come back into that rest and digest mode, rather than being in the stress response, we then can switch the parts of our brain and we can use the front part of our brain and become more curious. Maybe this is a practice that you might want to do on a regular basis, because if it's been pretty hardwired into you for quite some time, we know that it's a, a habit that you've developed over the decades and we need to override it with a new healthy habit. So by all means, use this resource as often as you want. And actually thinking about it, I'm going to give you two resources so you can switch them. So the first resource is if you go to totalsomatics.com forward slash regulate. That's going to be breathing and eye movement. That's going to be fantastic for regulating your nervous system. So that's totalsomatics.com forward slash regulate. The second resource that I'm going to give you is totalsomatics.com forward slash calm, which is C-A-L-M, calm. That's another audio, about eight to ten minutes. That's going to encourage you to feel comfortable to kind of stay in your body, to inhabit and feel calm and settled from within. Because again, if we've had a lot of disempowering beliefs over the years, been told different types of things, what we can start to find is that we just live in our head and we are very nervous to inhabit and notice sensations in our body because it's a survival mechanism to live in our heads, to cognize, to overanalyze, to think, to ruminate all the time. All of these sorts of things, you know, when we, we kind of keep thinking back to conversations from like 30 years ago, that's another trauma pattern that we want to break. We want to get more inhabited into our body, really develop that nurturing side of things. So totalsomatics.com forward slash calm that allows us to start to inhabit our beautiful body. And so just fluctuate, use those two. And when you use those two, it will just help you to start to regulate your nervous system. Again, I just want to reiterate, if you have found it's been years of very disempowering negative belief systems, just persevere. You know, you know that Rome was not built in a day and the same with shifting the state of our nervous system. It's going to take time. But if you're willing and you want to persevere with this, you know, I'm always here. There's always so many resources here within Total Somatics that I'm, you know, you know, you need to go back to other episodes. You'll see that I've got a lot of resources to support you. Um, but also just reach out to me. That's what I'm here for. Um, so you can go to support at totalsomatics.com if you've got any queries or questions. But the big thing is, if you ever want to come into the Total Somatics membership, that's really where you will benefit on another level there. So if you go to totalsomatics.com, click on the Join Now page, and you will find there is so much more that you can benefit if you come into the membership. So if it's currently closed, just leave your details there on the wait list. And the next time I open the membership doors, which won't be too long, it'll be 
sometime in the very near future um, you can by all means come in and benefit on another level and of course I'll be there to serve you and we've got all the workshops as well that you can enjoy but anyway I'm going to love you and leave you and I'm going to have a nice cup of tea and settle down for the evening so until next time all my love all my very best wishes take care bye thank you for joining me today if you've enjoyed this episode, please leave a rating and also forward this on to somebody you know will benefit. To learn more about pain relief, plus how to improve your health and well-being, go to totalsomatics.com. Until next time, take care.